Hi, everyone. Welcome. I am, I, I'm always excited when it's roundtable time, but I'm particularly excited uh, because I have been preparing for this for about nine months. I mean, the, the same amount of time that it takes to make a baby. <laughs> so I have so many resources for you tons and tons um, of things to share. Uh, I want to say hi to Emily, who's just coming in. Uh, hello to Nicole and Samir and Sandra. By the way, if I mispronounce anyone's name, um, please let me know. You can DM me in the chat uh, or uh, yeah, just let me know. Um, also, Wenman, hey, nice to have you here, Wenman and Samir. Uh, got, a lot, got lots of folks coming in. So uh, you did the hardest part. Um, you made it for navigating the chat GPT roller coaster, uh, how to harness these powerful AI tools. Uh, we're here either in real time or your future self is watching this or listening to this recording. So thank you for showing up. You belong here. Um, we are about to uh, enter uh, another dimension. I have this little um, birthday card, actually, that my, my mother-in-law gave me years ago, and I thought it would be good to play that little Twilight uh, Zone uh, uh, music there. So we're going to enter another dimension. We're going to have some fun. Uh, we're gonna, it's going to be relaxing and interesting. Uh, let me know in the chat, uh, have you been to a roundtable before? Uh, is this your first roundtable? Have you been here before? How many roundtables have you been to? Uh, my name, again, is Leanne Rayman, and uh, I tend to work in these three areas. One is working better together, which is all of those things that either make working uh, as part of a team beautiful, luscious, interesting, and invigorating, or really challenging and really difficult. So it's things like conflict resolution, communication, collaboration, change management. I also do a lot of digital engagement work, which is what we're focusing on today. So lots of tech tools. And then I also work with training of trainers. So folks who want to learn how to design and deliver really interesting, juicy, interesting learning. Uh, I can see, so Samir has been here before. Welcome back, Samir. Emily, it's your second round table. Welcome back. Um, Jai, welcome. I can see that you've joined us. So nice to have you. And Brand is here. Ah, so a couple things before we dive in. Um, please feel free if you would like. Uh, you are welcome. Um, based on members' requests, uh, I created a LinkedIn roundtable uh, 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 LinkedIn group. So I'm just putting that chat in the, or that uh, link in the chat. If you're interested, please feel free to join. Uh, also, please feel free to participate. I know that there's lots of really great ideas and expertise in the group. So uh, right until about just a few minutes before this workshop, I was adding things to the slides because things are changing so fast with ChatGPT and with AI. So please, please, please share what you know. Uh, also based on member requests, um, when you RSVP for this roundtable, if you weren't already, uh, you became a member. So you automatically uh, have access to the audio recording, the video recording, all of those kinds of things. Um, and please, please, please feel free if you find value in our time together, um, please feel free to share the link to join. It would, I would really love it if you would help join our, or grow our community, uh, rather. So feel free to do that. Uh, also, <clears throat> uh, I always ask for your feedback. So I'll do that at the end of the workshop today. It's really important to me to, to hear how this resonates or doesn't resonate with you. And as a way of saying thank you uh, from the last round table, I always draw at random one person's name and they win free access to my Ban Boring online meetings course. So I'll share who the winner is at the end of today. Uh, another thing that I usually do is I think it's really important to take time for learning. It's I also want you to be kind to your future self and use this learning as much as you can. So I switch it up each of the roundtables. I give you different kinds of tools. 
And for this one, uh, I have the quite worksheet. So, and I'm sure you have lots of ways for yourself how to remember and curate your learning. But if you wish, you can uh, take that link. I've just put it in the chat. And you, once you download that worksheet, uh, it becomes editable. And it's a way for you to remember uh, what you're learning. So feel free to, um, to use that if you wish. Uh, I'd love to turn it over to you. Um, so please, on the count of three, um, please unmute and say hello. Uh, and please say hello in whatever language or languages you wish. So on the count of three, please unmute. So everyone unmute, unmute, unmute. And on the count of three, say hello in whatever language you want. One, two, three, go. Hello. 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 Ciao. 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 <laughs> oh, so nice. So nice. Okay. If you haven't already, please feel free to mute yourself just to avoid the background noise. And uh, let us know, um, where are you? Where does this find you? What country are you in? Uh, where in the world does this find you? The beautiful thing about online learning is we can gather people from all over the world. Uh, so we have, uh, Anna is in Baku. Uh, oh, it's coming, they're coming in so fast here. Uh, Baku, Azerbaijan. Jai is in Vancouver, my hometown. Um, Matthias is online. Okay, Samir is in sunny Nairobi. Oh, I'm in Nairobi as well. Um, Isis is in Santiago, Chile. Delia is in Canada, yay. Um, Jennifer's in Switzerland. We've got Emily coming to us from Lusaka, Zambia. Um, Racha from Lebanon. Uh, Cynthia is also from Nairobi. Paulo is Montreal. Sori is France. Um, we've got Andrea from Geneva and Barand from Geneva as well. Christy's from Vancouver. Uh, Maurice from Lebanon, etc. Oh, so good to have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Okay, so um, I would love to know, um, as we start to dive into this chat GPT uh, and other AI tools, uh, how do you feel? How do you feel about these tools that are just completely blowing up? Um, they are just being used so much. So let me, I'm just gonna share a poll with you. Uh, so hang on just two six. Um, so you should be able to see the poll on your screen right now. So feel free, um, just and also give me a thumbs up. Can you see the poll? There, uh, there's uh, three questions. So feel free to answer those questions. So how do you feel about ChatGPT? Are you obsessed? Um, is it your guilty pleasure? Uh, can you take it or leave it? Is it slightly painful, like an itch you can't uh, scratch? Uh, is it excruciatingly painful? Is it awful, horrible, terrible, no good? Um, how confident are you? Question number two, how confident are you? Uh, are you close to getting your PhD in chat GPT? Are you, conf are you a confident king or queen? Is your confidence swinging back and forth like a trapeze? Do you quaver when it comes to chat GPT confidence? Um, and are you saying, oh, help, I can't, you can't even spell confidence, let alone chat GPT. And then number three, how much do you currently use chat GPT or similar tools like that, Bing, et cetera? Um, you hardly do anything else pretty often, so, so rarely or never. So there's three questions there. And I will show you the answers. They're all anonymous. Uh, so I'll just leave that open for another sec here. Um, so feel free to answer that poll. Uh, Chabesa, hello, hello, dear one. So special to have you here. Chabesa is a very old friend of mine. Oh, and Gidoni is coming in. Uh, hi, Donglin, nice to have you here. Uh, Nikita's here. Uh, hi, Gidoni, lovely to have you here. I taught another workshop this morning um, that they were in. Okay, so I'll give it another minute or here. Um, I hopefully you can't hear it, but I shut my windows and my door to keep my cat out, and she is she is protesting. <laughs> She's sitting just outside my window, meowing. She wants in. Oh, okay. Sonia is coming in. Great. 
Hi, Sonia, welcome. We're just filling in a three question poll. So feel free to fill that in. Um, there are multiple qu choice questions there. Um, I'll just leave it for another second. Almost, almost everyone's filled it in, so this is great. Hi, Chabesa. Hi, Kennedy. Okay, just looking at the chat here. <clears throat> Couple, we've still got some responses coming in. I'll just leave it open for 30 more seconds, and then I will close it, and I will show you the responses here. <clears throat> Interesting. Oh, these are great. Okay, I'm just gonna just gonna screen grab the <clears throat> the responses here. Oops. And then I'll show you what you I'll show you, I'll show you you. I'll show you what you said. Uh okay, so you can kind of locate where you are compared to other people. So I'm going to end the poll now. Almost everyone um, replied, so thank you so much for that. Oh, we've got Paula coming in. Okay, I'm going to end it. And then, and here are the results. So you should be able to see the results. Hi, Paula. We're just doing a, uh, we've just finished doing a poll. So the bulk of you, 50% could take or leave, um, chat GPT. Now I'm surprised if you could take it or leave it. I, well, you must be particularly motivated. So um, that's lovely. Uh, and number two, how confident are you? So the bulk of you, 44%, the most common are my confidence swings back and forth like a trapeze. Okay, lovely. And there's no judgment, like wherever you're at with your interest and your confidence, etc and your use. So let's see, the biggest response was how much are you currently using is 39% or yeah, sorry, 39% of you so-so. Okay, well, let's see um, how it goes as we continue with this. Okay, so um, our time together, and by the way, um, know that I paid for this. Um, I don't know if any of you know the Marketunist, so such great comics. So I paid to use, I, I, I have the license to use this uh, cartoon where this person is saying, I called this meeting to talk about how AI could handle things that waste our time at work. Carol, any ideas to start? And the computer says, hello, I am an AI, I am an AI large language model that Carol asked to handle this meeting for her. <laughs> so for some of you, it might feel like it's just taking over and it's overwhelming and confusing. Uh, so today, hopefully uh, by the time we finish today, you, you're going to um, get a handle on the basics of ChatGPT. We'll talk a little bit about some ethical considerations, some examples of how you can specifically use these tools and how to tailor it for your own use. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about trends. And if you are uh, a UN staff, you can go la 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 if you're not a UN staff. Uh, but if you are a UN staff and you wanna count this towards your annual professional development requirement, um, you can do that. You just need to sign the uh, attendance sheet, which I'll share at the end of our workshop today. So before we dive in, uh, I wanted to share some thoughts. And, and again, I have been collecting resources for you uh, to share for about nine months now. And I will share every single resource that I researched for this. Uh, you'll get those at the end of the workshop today. So some thoughts. Are organizational learning cultures and environments developing at the same rate to support the new revolution of learning tech? Right? We have this kind of revolution happening and are we out of sync in terms of organizations keeping up? Um, I love that Teresa Rose, uh, she uh, changed the, the, the uh, saying that goes that culture um, eats strategy for breakfast, culture eats tech for breakfast. I like that quote. So tech can, uh, culture, your organization and your personal culture can really influence how you do or do not use these tools. And uh, from the CEO of Google DeepMind, I love this, develop your human, your human skills and use AI as a tool to amplify those skills, which I think is a really great um, starting point, right? We wanna be in control of these tools. And there's no best practices right now, just common practices. Um, so it's, it's new for, for pretty much everyone. Okay. Uh, I, I like this, this uh, uh, screenshot from, from Lena Ranhawa. Um, these are 
tech that have all been developed just since to the year 2000. Now, depending on your age, that might seem like um, forever ago. Um, and for some of you, it might seem like yesterday. But this is another wave of a particular kind of tool that's tech tool that's really, really, really influencing us. Uh, and by the way, if this is your first roundtable, because when you member, um, when you registered rather, you automatically became a member, you'll get access to this PowerPoint deck, you'll get access to the audio recording, video recording, and all of the resources that I used in researching this presentation, which is over 100. Um, so you'll get you'll get access to those. Uh, I love this um, image from Andrew Jacobs. He put this together, you know, and again, this will resonate with some of you more than others, depending on your age. Uh, but the idea of, you know, having a radio cassette, that was the origin of a particular piece of, of technology. Then the execution, doing, doing something, um, an old thing better, was what, what used to be called a boom box, right? And then an evolution is doing an old thing in a new way. So that was the Sony Walkman, right? And then a revolution is doing a new thing in a new way, right? So the idea of the Apple iPod that came out um, around 2015 or so. Did anyone have an Apple iPod? Uh, let me know in the chat. Did you have an Apple iPod? Did, or, did, or did you have any of these? Did you, did you use the old school cassettes? Did you use a boom box? Um, Jai Singh had all of them. <laughs> some, and some of you uh, might be saying, what? what is an Apple iPod and, and what is a radio cassette? Uh, okay. Oh, hi, Malcolm. Nice to have you here. Uh, and now will you spot it? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, when I do customized workshops for clients, um, I ask people to give me their favorite songs and I create a customized playlist just for that particular group. Um, yeah, Christy, all the toys, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we really are in the midst of something brand new, right? We have never seen um, something like this before. So, um, and I'll share, I don't know if any of you have, have seen this, um, but uh, going back for a moment, there was this really great video that AT&T put out um, predicting the future. And it was remarkably uh, uh, correct. So I put that link in the chat. It'll also be in your workbook. So don't, don't worry about that. Uh, but it's kind of a fun, you know, what, what folks in 1993 thought that tech was going to be like in the future. Has anyone seen that video? Let me know in the chat. Has anyone seen that video? Uh, okay, ISIS hasn't. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a fun one. I hadn't seen it before. I saw it in a workshop either. Uh, apparently, it's a bit of a classic. So, you know, we want to look back, we want to look to the roots where we're coming from. Some of us are looking longer than others, depending on how old you are, what generation you are. And at the same time, we want to gain some control, right? We want to feel like we're in control, as opposed to uh, I don't know if you've seen this video. I think it's so cute. So um, this is a dog reacting to, uh, an, I believe it's an Alexa. So I'm going to play this with you. It's very, very short. And uh, just give me a thumbs up if you can hear and see it playing. So here we go. Okay. Oh, Carmela, um, did you have a question? I saw your hand up. Oh, thanks, Andrea. Thank you. Um, Carmela, maybe you were testing me to see if I was paying attention, but if you do have a question, just let me know. Questions and comments, insight, resources are welcome at any time. You don't have to wait till the end. Um, yeah, I thought it was really funny, Maria Torres. Um, right, Jennifer? Yeah. So we want, we want, you know, this is, if you haven't used an Alexa before, the Alexa is playing a song and the dog is literally listening to this and, and turning around, right, in the same place. So my hope for you by the end of our time together is you will feel uh, that you have a little bit more control, a little bit more knowledge, and you're not going to be turning around in circles. So let's jump in. Uh, Actually, give me a thumbs up. Are we good to do a quick introduction to um, chat GPT and AI? <laughs> oh, you're, no worries, Carmela. You were testing me and I passed, right? I saw your hand up. So I appreciate that you were testing me. 
Okay, I can see a couple of thumbs. Great. Okay, so chat GPT, um, first of all, AI. So I wanted uh, to give you a definition for AI, which, st which stands for artificial intelligence. So I thought, why don't I ask chat GPT? So I put in the prompt, the prompt, and we'll, you're going to learn so much more about this later on very soon. But the prompt is like a question that you're um, getting chat GPT to answer. And you can tell it what kind of, you can give it tons and tons of details. So I said, explain artificial intelligence to a child from the perspective of a cowboy. I mean, you can really do all sorts of wild things with this. So AI is like a smart digital buddy that helps folks with different tasks, just like a trusty horse helps a cowboy. It can think and learn, sort of like how a cowboy learns to ride and rope. While it's not a real horse, it's a clever computer partner for the modern world. So again, that comes from ChatGPT. Uh, and then I asked ChatGPT, explain what ChatGPT is, like you're explaining it to a teenager from the perspective of a poet. So this is what ChatGPT had to say. ChatGPT is a digital muse, a poet's electronic companion, weaving words and ideas. It's a creation of algorithms like an artist's palette of language designed to converse and inspire in the digital realm. With its virtual ink, I love that, virtual ink, it helps explore thoughts and knowledge, igniting creativity in the vast landscape of the internet. So that's a that's a, a very brief overview of ChatGPT. And how many of you have heard of large language models? Have you heard of this 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 uh, this concept of a large language model? Is that familiar to you? Okay, so Anna says no. So this is what ChatGPT is based on. It it that's how ChatGPT runs. And so I asked ChatGPT to describe, to explain what is a large language model or an LLM for shorthand, uh, uh, explain it to someone who doesn't like tech. <laughs> okay. And so ChatGPT says um, large language model is like a super smart computer program that can understand and talk to people by using a vast library of information it has learned from books and websites. It helps people with questions and tasks like answering questions and writing by searching its brain for the right words and information. So those are some quick definitions. And again, as members, you'll get access to all of this later on. Uh, oh, here comes Martin. Uh, and Wangui. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, um, what does chat GPT stand for? And I would, if you don't know, I didn't know before I had to look it up, make it up. So make up, like what could GPT stand for? So just have some fun with this. Uh, welcome, Martin. Welcome, Wambui. So lovely to have you here. We're just doing a brief introduction to chat B, uh, GPT. We just did some definitions. So what could GPT stand for? Like grand poetic uh, transformation. Like, okay, here we go. Um, let's ask chat GPT. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Uh, thank you. Let's see who said that. Thanks, Sonia. Okay, going past tryouts. Nice, Chabesa. Nice, nice. Um, what else? Great production technology, says Sandra. Malcolm says generative pre-trained transformer. Mm -hmm. Sonia says technology. Okay, here is uh, here is your answer. Oh, global pandemic tech. <laughs> nice. Someone DM'd me, so I won't say their name, but that's that's a great um, that's a great example. Okay, here is what it actually stands for. So it actually actually yes, Malcolm stands for generative pre-trained transformer. Can we just give a high five for not having to say chat generative pre-trained transformer every time? <laughs> it's a very long long word. Um, okay, so this piece of this tool was launched um, in November 2022. By the way, I'm just giving you some quick background, and we're going to get very practical, very pragmatic, and really dig in very soon. And un absolutely unprecedented. This has never happened in the history uh, of our planet. Within 
five days, one, two, three, four, five, five days, chat GPT had 1 million subscribers in five days. Uh, it's owned by OpenAI, and uh, the version that I use, um, and let me know in the chat um, if you're currently using uh, ChatGPT, and if you are, do you have the free version or the paid version? So the free version is, is version 3.5, and the data that's fed into what um, the, the large language model uses only goes up to 2021. So any data past 2021, ChatGPT is not searching. Uh, okay, Andrea uses, uh, no, Sonia uses the art. Okay, nice. Andrea is using the free version, so 3.5. Um, Berend is the same thing. Okay, uh, same with Paolo. J uh, Jai is using the paid version. Okay, great. Uh, and it's based on this large language model. So basically think of it like a ton, a ton, a ton of information is dumped into this large language model and then it searches it and gives you um, your ans answer. Now, interestingly, uh, ChatGPT does not use Wikipedia as a source. It does not use Wikipedia. It did in the testing phase, but it doesn't use that now. Um, oh, Anna's saying, why does it only use data up to 2021? That's a good question. That's how the developers have made it, right? That's where it stands right now. One of a common saying is that chat GTP, um, chat GPT is it, um, it's only going to get better from, from today, right? So today is its worst version and it's going to improve as we, as we go along. Um, oh, Paula's saying it looks like it's been updated. Oh, let me know. So if is it, I, so I researched this a couple of like, maybe a week ago, that particular fact. So that easily could change. So maybe it has, maybe 3.5 has been updated to past 2021 now. Um, and Jai, feel free to, to chime in here if you have anything to add, no pressure, but if you do, let me know being a paid user. Um, the difference between the free version and the paid version is during peak use times. Hi, Padma say, welcome, welcome. Um, Paid, uh, paid users have priority use. Uh, so you may find if you're trying to use chat GPT that um, it's just inundated and it's not it's not gonna give you an answer. Uh, but if you have a paid version, uh, you have priority. Uh, it's generally faster, the response times are faster and there's more uh, features in the paid version. Uh, <clears throat> now, having said all that, I don't know if anyone in Nairobi, I know we've got a few people in Nairobi. Um, has anyone seen this billboard that is um, floating around? And there's an article about it. I just put it in the chat. So this big billboard, yeah, so Samir has seen it. It's near, It's on um, uh, Lima Roo near the UN Boulevard turnoff. Um, it's, it's by an insurance company. It says, someone tell ChatGPT that GA Insurance is the third largest general insurer in Kenya. Now, can you, oh, Sonia's asking pros and cons, barred versus free chat, chat GPT. Sonia, I don't, I don't have the answer to that question. And I'm sure that someone in the group does. So if someone knows um, the answer to her question, um, please, please uh, uh, feel free to chime in there. Uh, so what do you think? Can you tell chat GPT something? Is this how chat GPT works? What do you think? No, you can't, yeah, you can't tell it that. So, but it's kind of a clever ad because apparently if you ask ChatGPT, who's the largest general insurer in Kenya, um, GA insurance comes up, I think it's eighth, right? So it's kind of a, you know, as long as you know that it's kind of a play on how ChatGPT works, um, it's it's kind of a clever ad. Uh, so Matthias is saying, yes, in a way you can. So. I mean, you can certainly um, guide it with your prompts. Um, you definitely have control over that. Oh, Jai is saying Bart. Oh, Bart isn't available. Isn't available in Canada yet. Oh, good to know. Um, uh, Sonia, where are you? If you don't mind sharing, let us know where in the world you are. Um, and Samir is saying predate an article with the info. Samir, I'm not quite sure I understand that. So feel free to expand on that if you like. Um, Matthias, I improve my own. Oh, Matthias, you're getting ahead of, of um, us. Yes. So yeah, one way you can use this is to improve your bio. Absolutely. 
Um, okay. Sandra's saying maybe now, but not in 2021. It was eight. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, okay. Nice. Oh, and Malcolm shared a, an article there. Thank you. Oh, you're in, um, UN headquarters. So Sonia, are you, which headquarters? Are you in New York? Are you in Geneva or are you in Nairobi? Um, okay. Um, so a few more things before we die, you know, continue to, to, to swim our way through this. Uh, you're in New York. Okay, great. So it's what time. Okay. So it's like late morning there for you, I think. Uh, so the uh, OpenAI, so that's the company that owns ChatGPT, the CEO, whose name is Sam Altman, who looks like he's 12. <laughs> he looks so young. Uh, said that the updated chatbot was capable of passing the bar exam and could score a five on several AP exams. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, and by the way, all the sources for all of these um, information, I, I will give to you. Uh, Wenman's saying, I'll need to jump, but we'll certainly, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nice nice to have you here, Wenman. Um, also, ChatGPT might have a better bedside manner than some doctors, but it lacks some expertise. Um, when they did some research, responses from ChatGPT were preferred over actual physician responses and rated significantly higher for both quality and empathy. Uh, and again, I'll share that study with you. Um, nearly half of responses from ChatGPT were considered to be uh, empathetic, compared so 45%, compared with less than 5% of physicians, right? So people are, are saying that chat GPT, when it comes to medical advice is more empathetic than actual human beings. So I don't know if that's good news or bad news. Let me know what you think in the chat. And according to an IBM study, 40%, so for almost half of workers will need to reskill in the next three years due to AI and automation implementation. That's 1.4 billion of the 3.4 billion people in the global workforce. So huge, huge numbers. So as we continue here, um, I'm gonna we're gonna go into step on the brake. So some cautions around it, then step on the gas. So we'll have some fun um, time experimenting with how you can actually use ChatGPT. Then I'll give you a whole lowdown on tips for prompts uh, for using ChatGPT, and then I'll share you uh, I'll share with you some other AI tools. Um, and you're going to test my drawing skills. Um, I'll give you an option to test my drawing skills. So um, before we jump into that, though, I wanted to kind of play this, this fun video. It's just um, over a minute. And this uh, might resonate with some of you um, in terms of your cultural background. Um, this is a cartoon about the, the roadrunner and the coyote. <laughs> Okay, so if you're not familiar with that cartoon, um, it's a classic cartoon from many years ago where the coyote is 
always chasing the roadrunner and never catches it. So today, I hope that you get a sense of catching up with ChatGPT if you feel overwhelmed or frustrated or confused, and that you have some really fun tailored ways to use it for yourself. Uh, and you're saying, where does ChatGPT take the info from the whole internet? Oh, so that's part of what, what we're not clear on because that's one of the downsides. Andrew, that's a perfect segue to the next um, piece here. Um, we don't, we're not, when you get an answer, we it's not uh, like in Google where you could see the source. So they've poured tons and tons and tons of information into the large language model that the, that chat GPT uses, but we don't specifically know where it's pulling from. Um, great question. Okay, so let's um, let's step on the brake. We're gonna step on the on the gas next, but um, let's temporarily step on the brake. Um, I love this little cartoon or this sign here. This escalator is refusing to escalate. This has been escalated to the engineer who was on their way up or down to check it out. Please use the lift. Okay, so we're gonna step on the brake, um, which is some things to be mindful, conscious of. Uh, cautious with, uh, et cetera. And one of the things we want to be careful with um, are deep fakes. So um, I just shared uh, a video with you. Now, this was part of a survey that was done for university, and I got permission to share it, and then they closed the survey. But they do use this video in it, and it's amazing. So with these tools, it's kind of like a telephone, right? You can use a telephone to connect with, you know, your mom halfway across the world, if that's, you know, or your, your caregiver, your parent, et cetera. Um, or you can use it to plan a murder, right? So tools can be used for, for good and for evil. So uh, deep fake is, is something we need to be really cautious of. Um, and we want to be really careful about plagiarism. So does anybody know this flag? Can anybody, um, does anybody know this flag? Let me know. So Tibet, okay, close. Yeah, Matthias. So I was working with a UN agency around a disaster simulation in a uh, fictitious country. And uh, so I asked a AI image generator to make a flag for this fictitious country. And uh, they, it came up with this flag. Now the problem is that this is the flag of the Dalai Lama. <laughs> so, so I used um, a tool like Tinai, put that in the chat. It's a reverse search engine. So you can upload an image and then do a reverse search and make sure that you're not using something. So we wanna make sure that we're not plagiarizing. So when ChatGPT or other AI tools give you information, it's always good to run them through uh, Google or something like that and make sure that you're not plagiarizing. So this was the country flag that when I asked the image generator to make something new, this is what it came up with. So I was able to use this in the disaster simulation. Um, also, um, plagiarism um, number two, uh, there is, um, I just saw an article and I tagged it for you. You can see it later if you want. The Game of Thrones creator and other authors are suing ChatGPT um, for theft, right? They're saying that um, ChatGPT is sharing information it, it doesn't um, have the rights to use. Um, number three reason to step on the brake is things can get scary and creepy. Um, there was a, um, a U.S. reporter who was uh, researching Bing and um, the the in its uh, in this person's interaction with Bing, which is another um, tool like ChatGPT, um, it led to some really creepy, creepy conversations. Uh, and in another case, a New York Times reporter was working with, I think it was ChatGPT or Bard, Chat, maybe ChatGPT, um, and it got super creepy. And it was trying to get the reporter to break up with his wife. <laughs> And he did not have a good sleep that night. Like he was seriously um, unsettled. Uh, also, reason to step on the brake is things cannot be true, right? 
So I've had ChatGPT do a bio for me. Some things were really cool and really interesting and true. And others are like, that is not true. Um, so I like this image here, you know, Mona Lisa and Leonardo da Vinci uh, in Florence, 1504, picture taken by Michelangelo. <laughs> so yeah, so, you know, things cannot be true. Um, so you don't want to leave your brain behind, right? You always want to check things out. Um, also filters. Um, uh, yeah, so Matthias is saying parts of his bio or your bio was yeah, entirely made up. Absolutely, yeah. So you can't leave your brain um, out. Um, other one is filters. So um, how old do you think this person is? Put it in the chat. So just take a guess. How old do you think this person is? Um, Jennifer's saying, I'd like to raise this to my friend tested ChatGPT with a summary of historical novels. Uh, oops, hang on here. Um, it was based on nothing near the truth or facts, and she wrote to ChatGPT to report. Nice, 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 good. Okay, so Jai is saying 12, Malcolm is 17, Sandra is 65, <laughs> nice. Um, Samir is 23, so we've got 15, 18, 19, um, 89, nice. <laughs> so some of you might know that this was a, uh, oh, sorry, hang on here. This is a filter being applied. So this, these two people are the same person. So the person on the top um, it is the same person as the person below, just with a filter applied. So uh, definitely ChatGPT can be filtering information. We don't know, we don't have uh, uh, the sources for where that information is coming from. It's definitely filtered. And it's definitely biased. So in the information it's pulling from, it will recreate uh, biases. So for example, biases that, you know, youth, youth or, you know, youth culture is the best. Um, the global North is the best, um, you know, the biases around race and all those kinds of things. Clearly the North being the best, I'm saying that as a means of bias. Clearly, I don't believe that. Uh, so, uh, number six, uh, is bias. Also, I love this information and I'll give you the, the link right here. If you want to find out more about bias, um, Andrew Jacobs did a great LinkedIn article on different kinds of bias and how we, um, can, uh, you know, make sure that we're not leaving behind our brain. We really have to not rely on this, um, Oh, and I can see I made a, a mistake with the numbering here. But how how much money do you think it costs to run ChatGPT every day? How much money do you think it costs to run ChatGPT every day? Take a guess. And it's in dollars. It's in U.S. dollars, the answer. Um, Malcolm is saying millions. Okay. What do you think? Anyone else? So for one day, one day. Any other guesses? Uh, oh, trillion. Okay, you guys are high. Okay, maybe this won't be so um, surprising to you. Um, but it's actually 700,000. Right. So I thought that was super high for one day. But whoops, um, you know, $700,000 for one day. So this is not a community based Wikipedia model. Um, only the really, really big, big players can afford um, to be involved in something like this. Um, also, it's really hard, you know, another reason to step on the break, it's really hard to, to, um, to wrap our heads around this. It's mind bending. Um, I, I just pulled this example. Um, a customer was stating that their rear brakes sound like Dory from Finding Nemo talking to the whale. <laughs> like, how do you describe the sound of brakes not working? I like that example, but it's a bit mind bending. Um, Sonia's saying, since no ads, it must benefit from the data feed. That's the capital. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, we want to be really careful um, around um, how, sorry, how are we using this, right? So I put together a, uh, a document. Let me know for the UN staff. Have you seen this? Uh, have you seen this, uh, the, the broadcast from the UN about using ChatGPT and other tools like this? Let me know if this is familiar to you. So organizations are really running uh, to catch up and, and get policy on this. Um, let me know in the chat too, uh, do you have, so Wilson's seen it, great. Um, 
does your organization have a policy around using ChatGPT and AI tools? Um, let me know in the chat. Um, I pasted this into a Google Doc, so I'll share that with you later. Uh, but these are some of the immediate steps that the UN wants all its staff to take. Um, Sorry is saying no, no policy. Yeah, it's not surprising, right? It's happened so, so, so quickly. So those are some of the reasons to be um, to be careful, to be cautious, to step on the brake. Are you ready to step on the gas? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Are you ready to step on the gas and talk about what we can actually use uh, with caution and not leaving our brains out of the equation? Uh, are you ready to talk about what we can uh, use ChatGPT for? Okay, great. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, um, one of the things that I um, used uh, ChatGPT for and other, I, I combined a couple of different tools is I created a flag, right? This made up flag for this made up country where we were doing a disaster simulation with uh, UN staff from conflict countries. I also created uh, a national anthem for this fictitious country. And then I took the national anthem lyrics and put it into an AI music tool. And here is the result. Okay, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I, I don't know about you. What do you think? Um, you know, being able to create a national anthem for a fictitious country, come up with the flag, put the lyrics to to um, to music. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Jai sang terrible song. <laughs> it's supposed to be rousing and somber, and you know. Uh, yeah, I say cool. Um, Sonia, I think AI is a great opportunity to use our creative brains and have more rest and enhance mental health with less work to hours. Yes, yes, when it's used properly. Absolutely. Um, thanks, Jai. Okay, so um, I would love to know, uh, I'm going to give you two links in the chat. Uh, so one of them is to a Facebook post. So feel free to click on that post. It has, I think, 400 unusual ways that um, ChatGPT uh, has been used. And I'd love for you to get some inspiration from this. You can go there, or maybe you already have a bunch of ideas. So feel free. I'm just going to pause the recording. We'll come back in just a second. So I'm just going to pause the recording. Okay, folks, so great ideas are coming in here. Um, feel free to use this as inspiration in the future uh, and you can keep adding to it. Oh, someone said help a disabled dog. Like amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, I'll clean that up uh, after the workshop and then uh, you can always come back to that for more uh, ideas. So let me bring you back and uh, we'll focus on some other cool ideas. Okay, so here are, so this, we've stepped on the brake and, you know, why we need to be always be cautious, be careful. We cannot use this without leaving our brain behind because of plagiarism and things not being true, et cetera, et cetera. So here are 14 ways that when we step on the gas um, that you can use chat GPT. So you, to problem solve, Right, so super, super helpful with this, right? Come up uh, with a problem you're facing and consult ChatGPT about it. This is uh, from this particular prompt, and we'll talk more about prompts after the break, is from Natalie Chopracert. I love her work, highly recommend you look into her work. She has all these reels on Facebook and brilliant when it comes to AI and ChatGPT. Uh, you can use it for strategy. Uh, so I'll put a link here. This is a, a learning and development strategy uh, that was created using ChatGPT. 
right? So if you need a strategy for something, uh, if you want a to-do list. So sometimes people think of ChatGPT as just spitting out tons of text, like in paragraphs, but you can actually put a whole bunch of text in there and then say, please make a to-do list for me. So you put a project, some information in and then say, please create a to-do list. Um, number four, to learn, right? You can put in different articles and ask it to summarize the article. You can say, please give me two historical viewpoints on a particular situation. Um, it is an amazing tool for learning. Again, we want to remember stepping on the gas and, you know, checking that information. Uh, Sonia's saying, remember to say, please. <laughs> Sonia, are you Canadian like me? <laughs> I love that. It's so sweet. <laughs> Um, oh, Anna saying, how do you drop an article in chat? GB? Oh, copy, copy and paste. Super simple. Yeah, it's could not be easier. Um, and know that after the after the break, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of information on how to use chat GPT um, in uh, like some really strategic advice around those prompts. It, it's all about the prompt. Uh, great question, um, Anna. Thank you for asking that. Um, it does have a word limitation. So sometimes you have to do it in batches. Does anybody know what the free version, what the limitation is? I think that's another benefit about the paid version is you don't have that as much. But let me know in the chat if anyone knows what the word limit is. Uh, okay, you can create personalized plan. So you can give it a bunch of background information and say, create a learning plan for me, create a networking plan, create a plan for working out, um, whatever you want. Malcolm's saying there's there's a tool called chat PDF, which gives you a summary of a PDF document and you can ask questions about it. Ooh, nice. Thank you, Malcolm. If you're so inclined, um, if you want to put, or I'll, I'll make a note because I don't have that tool um, bookmarked. So I'll make a, I'll make a note and I will bookmark that tool. Thank you. I can always rely on Malcolm to give some really cool tools. Okay, number six, to to use previously generated knowledge. So if you ask it, you prompt it, and you get some information, um, use that information that was generated to create something else. So create a to-do list for a social media strategy. So now you have a to-do list. Now using the to-do list, create a three-month um, uh, work plan based on the previous article and the to-do list. All right, so you can you can use that generated information over again. You can also uh, get it to analyze links. So you can give it a link and say, if your link, if your bio is on a particular uh, page, you can say, improve my bio. You can say, write a blog post uh, in the tone of these blog posts and you give it the links to your own blog posts, et cetera. You can give it the link to your website and say, analyzing this website, please give me SEO recommendations. Um, okay, I've got some other thing. Uh, Sandra saying, I tried that and it said it was not able to access outside links. Oh, um, this can also be uh, a difference between the paid version and the free version. So I think um, in the free version, I've been able to use one link at a time. So, and that's in the, in the tone setting. So I'll, I'll get to that after the break. Um, Mutahar is saying how to solve the issue that chat GTP doesn't accept more than, yeah. Okay. So it's, oh, so we have the answer. It's 4,096 4, letters. Uh, so you may have to do it in batches, right? If you're using the free version, you might have to give, feed it some text and then feed it some more text. Um, okay. Oh, so people are having trouble with the links. Okay. So Maybe that's another change. When I was using it, uh, I have used links in the past, but maybe they changed that in the free version. Definitely in the paid version, you can you can use links. Um, you can use it to you to create step by step guides. So if you want to learn how to, you, you're doing a service contract or something, get it to generate a how to guide for creating a service contract, and you want to give it more background information than that, um, but it can create guides for you. Um, for entertainment, give it characters and plot and um, have it generate a story or uh, type in your favorite artists and ask for similar songs or movies or books, uh, etc. Uh, 
Sandra's saying, does it store the information you enter? Yes, it does. Yes. And it's on the uh, left-hand side and those chats are saved and you can actually, I'll, I'll explain that after the break. Is that okay, Sandra? I want to make sure that we get to a break soon. But if I don't get to that, you let me know. Uh, okay. Uh, so number 10, um, to brainstorm new ideas, right? Someone said, um, on the worksheet, uh, there was something about brainstorming ad ideas or something like that. So you can absolutely get it to brainstorm. Uh, you can use it for conflict resolution. So if you're having a conflict with someone, you can outline the conflict and say, hey, what are your suggestions? You know, give me six different ways that I could move forward in resolving this conflict. Um, you can use it to journal. You can um, get it to ask you questions about your day and then have it write your journal entry, right? Uh, you can use it to study. So if you're studying on a particular topic, get it to ask you some questions. You can put the actual content in there uh, and it can create a quiz. It can um, create flashcards, all sorts of different things. And then um, the last one here uh, is you can use it to find pictures. So in the newer versions of, I think this is very, very recent. Um, did you know that in PowerPoint, so Bing is like chat GPT. Uh, and did you know that in PowerPoint, when you're right in PowerPoint, you can say insert image from online and it will, it will automatically bring up images. You don't have to leave PowerPoint. And then you just wanna make sure that the box um, that says Creative Commons is ticked. As, as long as that's ticked, uh, as long as it's checked, then any images that it uh, generates, you're okay to use. Someone's not gonna come back to you and say, you don't have the rights to use that image. Uh, has anyone used Bing in PowerPoint? It is like my new favorite thing. Uh, Mutahar is saying, as, as I give text, uh, it reacts and doesn't wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you want to, yes. Oh, okay. So you want to enter everything in one box. Don't enter something, then press enter. You want to have everything in the same prompt. Um, okay, Malcolm is giving uh, a resource there. Ah, thanks, Malcolm. So has anyone used Bing in PowerPoint to add images? Almost all of these images are um, in my PowerPoint presentation are from that technique. So have you used Bing in PowerPoint? It's a super, super simple way to use um, to use an AI tool. You're all very quiet. Okay. Uh, you can use ChatGPT4 for free through Bing search. Oh, Malcolm, say more about that if you don't mind. Let us know. Uh, okay. So um, I will uh, I will share all of this in the in the workbook for you that you'll get as members early next week. But these are all the sources. I, I combined a bunch of things from these different sources um, to create that. So are you ready for a quick break? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready for a quick break. Okay, great. So before you go to break, um, know that at the end of today, I'll be sharing a feedback survey with you. Please fill it in. You become eligible to uh, win my Ban Boring Online Meetings course. So I'll tell you who this month's winner is. Also, uh, please share that uh, that uh, uh, Learning and Development Roundtable link. Uh, I would love, love, love if you are finding value in the round table for you to share the link with other people. So there's the link right there. Also, uh, we have only one more round table coming up before the end of the year, it's November's. So that information and the date is there, it's November 16th. And let me know, let me know, let me know which topics I'm starting to plan for next year. Um, so let me know which topics you'd like to see. I'm thinking about doing something around creating good habits and motivation, something like that. Um, so let me know. And I'm also going to launch a poll. Actually, you know what? I'll do that when you come back from break. Um, so um, please uh, just take a quick stretch. We're, we're only together a short time. So can we do five minutes? Is that okay? If I set my timer for five minutes, can I get a thumbs up? Does that work for folks? <clears throat> Okay, 
So I will pause the recording. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, thank you. Uh, hopefully you got a chance to stretch. Uh, I wanted to thank people for their ideas for future roundtables. Please keep those coming. I'm planning for next year. So we've got work-life balance, uh, visual storytelling for meetings and presentations. Ooh, so good. Uh, and oh, and then Shabisa, I wanted to get to your question, actually. And um, it's very timely. Uh, Actually, before that, though, I wanted to address, Sonia said, um, when you say theme, Sonia, I'm guessing you mean for potential future topics, four-day working week ideas, leveraging AI technology for enhanced mental health. Ooh, like work-life balance is a big one. Okay. Uh, thank you. Keep those ideas coming. Uh, I would really appreciate hearing more ideas. Uh, so I'm also going to launch this poll. Um, I and, and uh, Chabesa asked this question. So the roundtable happens at two times. Uh, so it happens at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern uh, uh, East Africa time. And it happens at 5 p.m. East Africa time. This chat GPT uh, roundtable is happening at 5 p.m. And I was kind of toying with the idea of repeating the time zones or repeating the roundtables rather. So offering the same topic in each time zone, but I don't want to do that if there's some people that are attending in both time zones, which I see that there are here. So, so let me know uh, which time zone uh, do you tend to, if, if you've come before, do you tend to participate in the 5 p.m.? That's the one now, because I know it's not 5 p.m. Uh, for everyone. Uh, or do you participate also in the 10 a.m. one? So that would be seven hours earlier from when we started. Uh, or do both those time zones work for you? So I know for some people, it's like it's the middle of the night. So let me know. And I will keep that open for a little bit. Um, so I'm, again, I'm trying to decide if I should offer the same topic in both time zones, or if there's enough people that are participating in both time zones, then, um, then I won't do that. Uh, okay, and Shannon, welcome to you. Thank you for being here. Okay, so a couple things. Um, please share that link. Uh, I would love, love, love uh, for you to help us grow our community. So for this, these free roundtables that happen every month, our next one is on the 18th. It's based on member requests. So it's all about networking. Um, I'm having a lot of fun getting ready for it. Some real fun tools there. Uh, and that'll be November 16th is our last roundtable for 2023. Um, okay, let's get on. Do you want to learn how to, how to be a, a, a queen or a king of prompts? Are you ready to move on? Give me a thumbs up if you want to learn more about, we've talked about stepping on the brake. So cautious, cautious, stepping on the gas, how, like what, or sorry, what can we use ChatGPT for? Now I want to get into how to use it. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Anna's saying can do both times. Okay. Um, thank you. Thanks, Anne. I appreciate that. Okay, so you might um, recognize this person here. Let me know in the chat. Oh, is someone annotating? Let me just erase that there. Um, let me know in the chat if you recognize this uh, person. Yes. And I, I just happened to watch a... Um, I just happened to watch a video uh, interview of hers and I heard... I heard this, so let me just, I'm like, oh, that's so perfect for this workshop. Here we go. In a prompt, that is when we make, like, my kind of favorite thing. So she's talking about prompts. Now, in her world, she was saying that she, when she's writing a song, she prefers to have a prompt. She prefers to start with someone else saying, hey, can you do this? Or what about this idea? Uh, so that's kind of how it is for chat GPT. So it's all about the prompt and the prompt is what we call uh, what we're asking chat GPT to do. So that's, that's what we call the prompt. So here are, it might be a lot, but here are 16 tips. Okay, we've got kind of two more things to do. We'll talk about how to use ChatGPT. Uh, then we'll talk about some other AI tools because ChatGPT is just one of them. Oh, and then I, I also 
very quickly, we'll do some work around trends and then we'll close for today. So um, understand your goal, the problem that you're trying to solve. Again, you'll get um, all of, you'll get this PowerPoint and the recording and everything. The more specific you are, the better. Yeah, the more specific you are, the better. Um, you explain the tone or the tones that you want. And you can, this is Natalie Chopra's cert. This is, I think this is amazing. You can break up the tone. So you can say, make, make your response 75% uh, professional and 25% friendly. I mean, isn't that amazing? I think that's pretty cool. So think about the tone that you want in your answer. Um, try to avoid ambiguity. So fuzzy caterpillars are cute, but stay away from fuzzy prompts. You won't, you won't get good, uh, good output with, uh, fuzzy prompts. Uh, try to be nice. Uh, oh, a tequila is coming in. Uh, so try to be precise or uh, sorry, concise in what you're asking. Um, also give it context. So you can say, uh, now you want to be careful about the data that you're giving chat GPT. Do not give it any, do not give it any sensitive data, any data that your organization wouldn't want you to be sharing. Um, if it's appropriate, you can say, I am a P3 level G staff working, or that doesn't make sense. I'm a P, you know, I'm a P3 staff working on human rights um, for UNICEF and I need to do X, Y, Z. So give it, give it some context. Uh, also you can assign a role or a persona. So act like a CEO, act like a SEO expert, act like a poet, you know, whatever you want, you can tell, you can give it a role. Um, also, um, one is not done. So once you get a reply to your prompt, you can ask follow-up questions. You can say, make it shorter, make it longer, make it more formal. You don't have to start all over again. So you can ask follow-up questions. You can use that generated knowledge again. So if you've asked it to generate 10 movies from, you know, the best movies, top 10 movies from 2022, then you can say, now write a blog post about those top 10 movies, um, comparing any themes that are similar, right? So you can not only ask follow-up questions, but you can ask it to do something different with that generated information. Um, Atikila, no worries about being late. Um, and thank you for being tenacious about your connectivity. Um, super appreciate that. Okay, you can um, get it to revise the text. So you can say, no, I need it, you know, more this way, or, you know, now generate it like you're a scientist or something like that. So you can ask it to revise. Um, you can also tell it the format. So I did this the other day. You can say, generate the answer in, uh, in a table or a chart or a to-do list or, you know, however you want. So let it know uh, what kind of format you want uh, it to generate. And then um, don't be human, or don't be human. <laughs> Sorry, be human, definitely be human. Um, don't be a robot. So talk and type as you normally would, right? You don't have to change anything about that. Um, remember that flag that I came up with in uh, the AI uh, image generator, you want to check for plagiarism, right? You want to, oh, there should be a thing there. Um, so just check and make sure that the image or the, the content that it's generating, you want to make sure that it's not plagiarizing. And then if you want to get really um, uh, a little more, uh, sophisticated, you can get really efficient. So someone asked if it stores your prompts, it does, and it names those um, prompts, you can rename those. So if, if it if it's helpful for you, if it's something you want to keep going back to, you can rename those. You can also configure how the dashboard um, works, you can share the content that it's generated, you can share those links. Uh, you can make templates if there's things that you're asking, you're prompting um, regularly. And you can export those um, chat logs to your email if you want to save them. 
uh, you also want to give it any particular constraints. So you might say maximum a thousand words, you know, generate a blog post that's maximum a thousand words or something like that. Um, and then the last one is my favorite, which is experiment. I have fun with this experiment, be cautious, be thoughtful, uh, but feel free to experiment. <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm gonna end this poll here, by the way. I just realized that's there. Um, and once again, these are um, the sources for all that information. So I will um, put that in the in your workbook so you'll get you'll get everything. Um, that I used. It's more than a hundred sources now. Um, so that's how to be um, really efficient and effective with your chat GPT prompts. I want to finish off with some other AI tools, um, super quick on trends, and then we will finish for today. The time is just, I don't know about you, but the time is just flown by. Um, so other AI tools, um, I will share this with you in the chat and I'll also put everything in the prompt or in the workbook rather. So I'll show all of these to you in a second, um, but here are some examples depending on what you wanna do. So if you wanna um, learn about more AI tools, free AI tools and AI tools, those are those are two great, or th actually three links there. Um, there's uh, things about getting meeting insights, um, learning more about AI, image generator, et cetera. There's also things like how to read a book in two minutes, uh, get help with your writing, get help with your drawing, um, et cetera. Put those here, so lots and lots of links. Um, and I know that I just shared a ton, a ton, a ton. So the links that I'm about to show you um, will all pop up with this link. So let me, I'm just gonna briefly take you over to those links and let me know so can you see uh can you see the this is prompt genie <clears throat> i'll just show you these very briefly okay thank you so this if you want some help with prompts prompt genie can help you the if that last link i sent to you will open all of these links at once and they're going to be in the workbook as well. Um, this is briefly, this is if you need some help analyzing your, your, your meetings, that's a fun one. Um, this one is if you want to learn more about AI, that's a good one. Um, now this one here um, is quite something. So um, uh, let me just see, where did it? Uh, so this is called images.ai. So if you put in something that you're looking for, so a unicorn riding um, a bicycle, Baroque, Baroque style. Okay, so in this one, what you wanna do is put in a prompt and then you wanna hit brew. And we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, this one is how to uh, how to uh, um, read a book in two minutes. Um, this one is helping you with your writing. This one is helping you with your drawing. Now, be kind, people. Be kind. Um, someone put an image that I could draw here. So some, some a simple, simple image. What's something that I could draw a picture of? A unicorn. Oh, Sandra. Okay. So in this one, so this is autodraw.com. You want to always make sure you're starting over. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna start to draw, oh gosh, a unicorn here. Let's see, okay. And what's happening, if you look at the top, you'll see it's trying to find out. <laughs> it's trying to find what it thinks I'm drawing a picture of. Uh, oh, that's two. Uh, okay. Did it find a unicorn? It didn't find a unicorn. Okay. But it did find a cow. So you just, it's, it's, it's helping you draw things. So you draw something and it will, um, it will try to help you. Uh, 
Oh, Beverly, uh, so some, oh, uh, someone's asking me about all the links. Yes, you're going to get them all. I'll show you, I'll show you how you'll get them in just a second. Yeah. Um, if, and then finally, one tool I wanted to share with you is if you need to generate a how-to guide, oh, Scribe is so amazing. So here is a, an example of um, basically anything you do online, you create a, a Scribe account and then you just do your thing online as normal and it will create a how-to guide. It just automatically does it. And if you don't like the name that it gave you of that step, you can redo it. It'll, yeah, it's so easy, so simple. So my friends, uh, I'm gonna take us back to the presentation here. Now, if you think any of, oh, actually, no, I'm not because I forgot to, let's see what happened with our unicorn. Okay. <laughs> so remember I said, generate a unicorn riding a bicycle. Um, so here are AI generated images, right? Now, if you think that any of these tools deserve an ooh and an ah, if you can, if you're like, Okay, Leanne, there's at least one tool there that uh, I'm going to use. Um, please unmute and do ooh and ah. So let me know. Does it deserve an ooh and an ah? Ooh. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, right? Ah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take us back because we just have a few more minutes left. Um, so, um, just really quickly, we just have a couple minutes left, but I can hang around for a couple minutes if you have, if you have questions. Um, I did say in the description, I would talk about trends. So a couple things about that. Um, some of my research says that, and this is from ThoughtSpot, that consumers will be able to have more control over these tools. The quality is going to get better and the context is going to get better. Um, this comes from reskilling in the age of AI. These are some paradigm shifts. So reskilling is going to be so, so important. Um, and that, uh, all leaders and managers will be, uh, responsible for that. It's a change management initiative. Um, and it's important that employees want to reskill and that it takes the village. And uh, I like this, this quote from Andrew Jacobs. We have a gap in what I call heavy thinking, critical thinking, and creative thinking. So we can't leave the thinking behind. We can't leave everything to these tools. So as we finish up, I want to give you a high, actually a high, high 20. <laughs> that's a lot of information about a topic that's really, really new, and it's changing by the day, right? It is just such a massively changing uh, topic. So these are all the things that we uh, went over. And um, please, I would love for you to be kind to your future self and take action. So in exactly one minute, um, the PowerPoint is going to arrive in your inbox. This is something new. Um, members have said to me, oh, Leanne, you know, we're okay waiting for the video and stuff because we know you have to timestamp it and stuff, but can we get the PowerPoint deck earlier? So uh, at the bottom of the hour in one minute, uh, the PowerPoint will arrive in your email inbox, the email that you registered with. So that's all there for you. The workbook will arrive by email on Monday, I always try to get it out on Monday. That will have the audio recording, the visual recording, uh, the video recording rather. Uh, it will have the workbook, the PowerPoint, all of those kinds of things. And if you're like, oh, Leanne, there's like, you just talked about so many links and do I have to wait that long? You do not, my friend. So here are, I think there's 110 <laughs> resources there. So this is a tool I use all the time called Digo. It looks like this. So when you click on that link, um, all of these uh, things here are all things that I have tagged to do with artificial intelligence. So um, that's all the research, all the tools, everything that went into this workshop is all there for you to access anytime you wish. Um, please um, use that chat GPT worksheet as an inspiration. Um, experiment, have fun with this, 
And please, please, please make sure that you know um, your organization's policy. So uh, as we go forward, um, I really hope to see you November 16th. I've had a ton of fun getting ready for this networking workshop, which is what members have asked for. And it's the last one uh, for the year before we start again in 2023, no, 2024. <laughs> uh, and um, please, please, please fill in the survey. Um, and this month's winner, so I always pull one person's name um, from, for people who filled in the survey, uh, is Jelena. Uh, I don't think she's here today. Um, so she'll get uh, free uh, access to my uh, ban boring online meetings. And here is, if you want more information on that online course, um, it's right there. And please take a minute to fill in that survey. It's really, really helpful. You get to tell me how I did, how I can improve, and also some input for next month's topic. So know that that is there. And um, again, all of those um, resources, you'll, the, the PowerPoint is now in your email inbox, so you can check that. And if you are a UN staff person, um, I'll just put all of this in here in one shot here. Uh, so um, here we go. So that's the attendance sheet. That's if you are a UN staff person and you want to have this credited to your annual professional development. When I send you the link to the video, know it's timestamped, so you can just click ahead to any part in, uh, in the video that you want. And finally, if you would like some support or you wanna talk about me doing a workshop for your team around team building, whether that be conflict resolution, communication, change management, creativity, et cetera, or tech tools or training of trainers, um, please get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you, everyone. You are rock stars. Um, I really enjoyed having you here. Um, I'll hang out for a minute or so in case there's any questions. Uh, I'm going to pause the recording right now. So I'm going to say bye. <clears throat>